How's my tiara? <laughs> it's special. <laughs> no, seriously. Yeah, it looks be B E A U T F U L. Shut up. <laughs> can't make this thing work in the middle at all. Yeah, me too. I can't make it. Just no matter how I wrap this sucker, it just looks bulky. <laughs> <Shut> <laughs> And welcome to the rich and the gameless. <coughs> uh, the rich and the gameless. My voice went there for a sec. Oh yeah. Yeah, something wrong with it. I know how to clear that. <sighs> Have you ever bought a lotto ticket and then automatically daydreamed about what you would buy? So if you have daydreamed about what you would buy if you won the lottery, this is a show for you because we're going to take a look at some very expensive, possibly douchey games you could <laughs> buy. <laughs> Why are they douchey? If you spend that much on a game, mm, you got more money than brains. <laughs> Possibly. Yeah. Or just a lot of money. You don't have that many brains. Maybe you do. I don't know. You had millions of dollars, you wouldn't buy at least a few of these games on the list. Shut up. Don't, don't even lie to me. First game on the list. Girl, you read it. You do it. This is all you, princess. <sighs> Without my glasses on. I wish I had a monocle or something. <laughs> Whatever. A telescope. The Entertainment Mountain Bike Rally and Speed Racer. It's not entertainment. If you look at it exactly. Exertainment. Yes. Exertainment. Exertainment. The reason the game was so expensive was not the individual games themselves because they can be bought separately for about 30 to 50 bucks. Just well, two games? Did you name them? Yes, uh, Mountain Bike, Rally, and Speed Racer. Anyways, the uh, stationary bike, the only way you could get the two pack combo game was if you bought this in a pack with a stationary bike. And it recently sold for. $5,000 for the game. That's not even the bike. That's not even the bike. We couldn't even get <clears throat> specs on what the game or what the game and the bike sold for together because there didn't seem to be one. <laughs> so just for the damn game, I could just, I just buy two games. You can buy the game separately and you could still use it with the bike. But this was the only way the game was sold as a combo pack, and that's the only way you got that game. And because I sold very few of those bikes... I don't even know why. Mm. Anyways, moving on. You're moving next. On. I get to drink now. Oh, oh camera <laughs> drink! Oh, okay. So we get our real drinks. Uh-huh. For our second game, it's King of Fighters 2000 on the Neo Geo. Now, this game has been put on every damn platform out there. There's yeah. a mobile one, I do believe. Is I think it? so. Yes, I think so. Anyway, you can get it everywhere now. But for that game cartridge for the Neo Geo, they only made a hundred yeah. English copies. And that's so why it was so rare. One sold for $6,000. Was that on eBay? Do you know what it was sold? I'm not Just really at sure. Just at auction or on eBay or something. But yeah, for $6,000. It was the last game that SNK produced before, before going bankrupt yeah. and going out of business. Yeah. Don't have an Neo Geo, but it is on my wish list. Two, number three and four. Yes. So the next game on the list is a sports game. If you thought sports games couldn't be expensive, wait for this one. <laughs> it's the most expensive game that was ever made on the PS3, NBA Elite 11. And they were trying to compete with NBA 2K games. Promising a better control system, the game released a demo that was so glitchy and full of bugs that they scrapped the game entirely. But a box of 15 went out and sold, making it extremely rare. The rarest game ever sold on the PS3 for a whopping $9,500. That's insane. That is. And you know what's funny? I don't want to pay ten dollars for a PS3 game now. They say it was so glitchy, but I've never played an NBA game because I'm Canadian. Eh? Uh, but the <laughs> NHL 2K games back then were so so glitchy too. Glitchy, they were horrible. The, the 2K. Oh, I've never. And if that one was way worse than 2K, oh, I couldn't even imagine. I've never played an NHL game, so it doesn't matter to me. I mean, I have all day, every day. Get out. It's a sports game. It doesn't matter. 
All right, we have an Atari game, Red Sea Crossing. Red Sea Crossing wasn't promoted in mainstream gaming magazines, but in religious publications because the game is essentially Moses crossing the Red Sea. Sounds fun. <laughs> Gameplay of it'll sell itself, Tristan. <laughs> <laughs> People started to say the game was a hoax until an unboxed version was found at a yard sale. It was believed about 100 games were produced, sold at auction for $10,400 in 2012. For real? For an Atari game. That's crazy! That you would play once to say you played it, but other than that, it's a collector's Stick it on your. It's a trophy. You're buying. You know, a trophy. I might take a Jehovah's Witness more seriously if they came selling games at the door. Maybe. I, mean, I might. Five and six. Five and six. Okay, for game number five, we've got Tetris for the Mega Drive. And because of licensing issues, Sega did not have the rights to produce a home console version. Only Nintendo did. There were, they were, huh. You said you could read good. <laughs> they were ordered to destroy all copies, but a few, no more than 10, were saved. If you want a copy now, it'll set you back $17,000. I'm assuming that's for a complete copy. I would hope so. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, if I've got $17,000 bouncing around in my bank account, I'm not putting it on a Tetris Mega Drive game, or a Tetris game for that matter, or any game. Close your jaw. It's not happening. Do I have to hold it all fucking? <laughs> yeah. Is that how you hold it? I don't know. I don't drink wine very often. I only drink wine in a beer glass. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. All right, game number six is Birthday Mania. Another Atari game it makes the list. Yep. Many Atari games on the list. You can buy a box of Atari games for freaking ten dollars, but there's a few that are rare. Mm -hmm. This game was a game that you could get personalized. So you could put the person that you're giving this game to, you could put their name on the title screen. When it came up, it played the happy birthday theme song along with your name. Yep. Other than that. I don't even know what the game's about. I don't even know what the game's about, <laughs> really. Um, they only made 10 to 15 copies. Yep. And only two known copies in existence. That's crazy. That's insanity. I have a birthday coming up next year. You just had a birthday. Well, you get one every year. Yeah, but on my birthday sooner. Oh, I could get that for your birthday. No, because I'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> that won't be my birthday present to myself. Killing me? Yes, if you buy me a stupid game that's worth nothing. And you wonder why I drink. Should do like skip numbers. We'll do six and nine next. So we'll choose to six to nine. Oh yeah. No, we're doing six seven and eight. But six to nine is way better. Six to nine. Six to nine. Six I'm to not nine. dumb. <laughs> Anyways, this is game seven and eight. Next, we're going to talk about a game, another Atari game. <laughs> you jackass. <laughs> I'm good. Want me to have another drink? Okay, shush. Would you like me to aspirate some wine again? <laughs> Next on our list is another Atari game. And don't get too excited if you have this in your collection. It's likely not the proper one. But uh, Superman for Atari in yellow letters, and if it says <clears throat> Sears Telegame on it, then it is a really rare game. This version was only sold in Sears stores and was produced in far fewer numbers. And an unboxed cartridge alone will sell for $350. And if you're lucky enough to have one sealed, unopened, and boxed, then you could be looking at upwards of $30,000. This is an Atari game. This is an Atari game. I think there's way too many Atari games on this list. I know, but what am I gonna do? They're the most expensive games, and you said look for the most expensive craziness. games. Craziness. I know. Whatever. I know. I should go down and check my collection. You probably don't have one. I don't know. Don't get too excited. Game number eight is Air Raid. Another Atari 
Another Atari another game. Another Atari game. <laughs> it was produced by Menavision. 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 That sounds like an X-Men. That does sound like an X-Men. <laughs> Menavision. What's your superpower? <laughs> I make games. That would be a fucking good superpower. Maybe it just has like X-ray vision. That'd be awesome superpower. They've already got one of those. Ooh. Don't they? That's a That's Superman. He could be X-Men if you want it to. <laughs> yeah, you just bust in there. Oh, X-Men now. <laughs> Whatever you say, Superman. <laughs> <laughs> it's estimated there were only 12 copies produced of this air raid game. Mm -hmm. And there are three copies that have been found so far. The first copy was found in 2010 and sold in box for $31,600. Yeah. Second copy was found in 2011. It was just a cart. Still sold for $3,575. The third copy was found and it was complete with manual. This was in 2012. For $33,433. And, and 30 cents. cents. What if I didn't have 30 cents? You missed, you missed it on that eBay. You didn't snipe it. Do we? I'm a little good. drunk. <laughs> There's a goddamn shot beforehand. I'm double fisting over here. <laughs> Drinks! Game number 9 and 10. Ding! Gamma Attack is a shooting game created by amateur programmer Gamation, specializing in Atari 2600 hardware add-ons like FP1, a mod that attached to the Atari joystick and added an auto-fire function. Gamma Attack was offered as a single purchase game for $24.95 or $14.95 with FP1 purchase. Because the ad only ran once, only a handful of Gamma Attack carts were said to be produced. The only copy known to exist for sure went up for auction in 2008 for $500,000, which obviously never sold. If I had the money. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> he was asking way too much. It's said to be worth to close for between twenty and fifty thousand. Like every yard sale I've ever gone to, for game number ten. Mm -hmm. Want to cheers to game number ten and it would yeah. chug. Cheers and chug. We got a cheers and chug. Cheers and chug. Where's game my number ten. Vomit bucket. Cheers and cheers and chug. Cheers and chug. <laughs> I can't do it. Ah, oh, very classy. Ah. Very ladylike. <laughs> All right. Game number 10, which we should have went backwards. It should be actually number one. Yeah. This is the most expensive game on this list today. And it's not what you think. Super Mario Bros. Number one. Number one. And you say, how? How is that the most expensive game on the list? It's, it's the fact of the way it was sold. Because in total, they sold over 4 million copies. 40. 40 million, sorry. Over 40 million copies. But they, most of those were all in a shrink wrap seal. Well, there was a select few of game, a select few that were sold in the test run. Yep. In New York and in LA 35 years ago, right? Yes. And they weren't sealed with a uh, shrink wrap. They were sealed with a Nintendo logo sticker on the tab, I guess. Yeah. And um, there was only one found mint condition yes that they well, found so far that they found so far yes there might have been more but this Who is knows? the one that we that we we found when we, we the rarity <laughs> to this is that it was sealed and that sticker was this, not this it was still sealed the sticker was still there it was near mint condition so it went up for auction and a group of collectors all pitched in and bought this game for one hundred thousand one hundred and fifty dollars believe it or not that's crazy yeah. you you know what i my first thought was i wish i had a hundred thousand no it's not <laughs> i'm just wondering if sheldon cooper helped negotiate the terms of the contract to timeshare the game like he did oh with his God. like he did with his time machine on the show Stop it. you shut up it's not a friend's reference. So what do you want to say about the end of this list? 
I'm just gonna say you'll never own one of these games. But if you're gonna dream, you might as well dream big. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get my lotto ticket and dream big. You'll have to, because we haven't won big. more than five bucks on the lotto, so. Just, just take a second and imagine. Win the lotto, what would you get? Hey. What did you do? I got a couple of the essentials there. They were a really good price. I had to get them. It was a, it was a couldn't pass up opportunity. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Hey baby. Honey, I bought you some games. That's all they had? My dream sequence is bullshit. <laughs> For people that stuck around and watched the entire video, thank you. And if you like what you see and you want to see more, hit that notification bell. And get all our up-to-date content. We I will release. totally get dressed up for you again. No, she won't. No, I won't. <laughs> if this is a popular series, if people like it, we will continue to do more. To the rich and the gameless. I ran out of wine. Let's chug. No! <laughs> this will kill me! I'm not chugging. Yeah. I'm not chugging. Chug a drink. I'm not chugging. Chug a drink. I'm not chugging. Chug a chug. I'm not chugging. Chug a lug. I can't do it, Scott. Let's do it. Alright, I'll race you. Okay. Let's go. Okay, game on! I can't do it. I can't do it. Winner! I don't know what to do with my hands. Well, they don't. They kind of. Oh, I can't. Well, I, oh, I can't do it. Put your hands in the five hole. Put your hands in the five hole. There you go. Do it like that. Always gotta protect the big nuggets. <laughs> the big nuggets. Yep. <laughs> the timbits. What can you? Timbits. You always gotta protect your timbits. All right.